Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so much better than I was last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm glad. What you were you it was kind of uh it was kind of dark for you last week. You were in the dark PowerPoint black hole of energy. Yes, and just yeah, yeah. doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But we we did the webinar on Wednesday and it, and it went so well. And I have to say thank you to many of our listeners were there. Oh. And that is so awesome um for me to see because you know, I I hope you get a lot out of these webinars, but I I really appreciate the the, the support myself because to me yeah. that feels like you're supporting me as well and um it was really cool to hear people say oh i love your podcast and i'm a long time listener and that's fantastic i made i, I made a couple mistakes you did <laughs> yes like what what kind of mistakes there was one one part of the webinar where i completely lost place because i had um the slides were a little wonky because they didn't fit exactly the way they, they were never fixed it well, they tried, and so most of them were okay, but there were a couple that that were weird, and so that threw me off. Oh, no. And so there was one part where I was, I just completely lost track of what I was saying, and I'm looking at the slide, and it doesn't, it doesn't look right, so that's throwing me off. And then usually when I do my own webinars, I use the space bar to click yeah. to the next slide as but, you do yeah yeah but this way the the system that they use i had to actually click with my mouse and i had to click this little arrow and so there were many times where i couldn't get the arrow to click <laughs> i'm just like <laughs> really like what is going on so oh. you know i i hope people appreciate the you know kind of humor that i tried to make fun of myself with but um and then there was another big boo boo that I did is I had a um an exercise for them to do and I forgot to put the exercise in the actual handout. <laughs> oh, no. So this is what I've learned. Can I teach can I tell you what I've learned? You're doing it wrong. Do it better. Yeah. <laughs> I like, it was this thing though that I felt like, okay, the material is so good. I'm going to offer this webinar to my audience um, next year because I really do think it's a great material, lots of great content. One of the nicest compliments I had was somebody said, um, I thought that I would come into this knowing already what you were going to say. And it was a surprise. That's awesome. So to me, that yeah, that was like the highest compliment ever. And I'm definitely going to do this again because um, I think that's important. So be on the lookout for that. And and what I'm learning is that the next time I present this, it is going to be better because I've worked out the kinks on, on Ada's audience, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know, Aww. you live and learn. And um, thanks, Ada. Yeah, thanks, Ada, for being you know my guinea pigs. My, although I have a real guinea pig, and he's really cute. His name is Oliver. Actual guinea pig is a real guinea pig. I'll have to put a picture of him because I got to tell you, he's one of the cutest little guinea pigs ever. We have we have just a little bit of follow up before we dig into the follow up though. You know the drill. Head over to takecontroladhd.com to get to know us a little bit better. Uh, you can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD and call us 503-664-4 ADD. And uh, thank you everybody who has signed up already to support the show on Patreon, patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is um, as we say, it's listener supported podcasting, and, and we're getting uh, a Facebook page up right soon. Yeah, oh, no, we're t it's yeah, no, yeah. We got. We, I, I wrote the copy. Awesome. Did you like it? Was it good? It was great. We, but All we're right. changing the photo because I, we, oh, we really didn't the photo. take the photo. No, that was not good. Yeah, that was one of those things. You you do you do a thing, and then you go to sleep, and then you wake up, and it's terrible. The thing you did before the sleeping, it yes. was terrible. <laughs> And so I, I am that has to, has to change, has to change, uh, and it will. And then we will have the group uh, launched for for uh, Patreon supporters, and and you'll get an email from yours truly, and it will point you to the right place to go uh, get uh, logged in. So there you go. 
Yes. Thank and you. I Everybody. really want people to to join. So really do please consider that that five dollars a month so that you can be part of this community because I'm really looking forward to like having a little bit more contact with people that listen to us because the emails are great. Please keep sending the emails and, and letting us know what you think and how you feel about what we're doing. Um, but I also just want to have it go a little step further. And I, I see us doing that with this Facebook group. So I, I really hope so. And, and, you know, we, we're really trying to do some new things and change the way we do this and, and attend more events and be a, and, and grow and be a bigger part of the community and, and your, uh, direct support uh, helps us to do that. So, um, you know, if you have faith in us and uh, trust us to do good things for the ADHD community, um, then we hope you will trust us enough to throw us a few bucks um, uh, through patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Thank you uh, for your support. Okay, we have some feedback. Uh, and uh, this uh, before we start talking about email... Oh, yes. email. I know I you're know. excited about this. No, I am actually. I cannot <laughs> wait to hear what you have to say. I seriously, because really, like, I cannot tell if you are being uh, no. uh, truthful with me right now. No, I, I know this is going to, well, I know it is going to definitely help a lot of listeners, but it's going to help me. And um, I can't. Are you having email you problems? Is that what you're. I, it's not so much that I have an email. Like, I feel like I have a pretty good control of my inbox, but I have this little side file, right, where I put emails mm -hmm. that I don't want in my inbox, but I think I need to keep them. And mm -hmm. that is, that's definitely gotten out of control. And so, um, I need to figure out why I'm keeping them, Pete. Like, yes. really, why? I never go back to them. And so <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah. This really is therapy. I love it. Yeah. So no, I All really, right. truly am very excited to hear this. And we haven't talked about email. I, I mean, for years, literally. Yes. So yeah. this is, yeah. um, this is great. But yes, okay. I, I did have some feedback. I, I suppose since it was written to me, I'll go ahead and share it. Um, yep. Okay. All right. So this gentleman emailed me and said, I, I had some podcast feedback. Uh, Nikki mentioned going to a general practitioner to get a diagnosis rolling. In my experience, it actually started with my therapist. Sometimes uh, GPs are less sensitive to this stuff. And so I thought that tip might help listeners. Well, I emailed him back and I said, absolutely, you're right. Like, I don't even know why I didn't even think about that. So I'm yeah. so glad that he, he brought it to our attention. So then well, and I could, I can, I, my, my hunch is that it's, it's because the, it's generally going to, if you go to a, a psychologist, it's generally the GPs that, that are going to write the prescriptions. And so like, if you're, if you're going to need medication, right. I mean, the, the therapist isn't going right. to write a prescription for you. Yeah, um, yeah. And so and so I can totally see how you know it's a chicken or the egg that. thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but I think most of the the diagnoses come from generally the the therapist. The, therapist. the assessments come from the therapist. Yes. Okay, anyway, there was more. Well, yes, there was more. So I I thanked him for his his um suggestion said I was going to um put it on the show. Here I am talking about it. And he replied back with a little bit more information and I asked if I could share this because I thought that this was a really um great journey and successful one. So this is, this is his story. Um, he got a therapist and he talked to her about focus and some different things and how for years he thought he had ADHD. Uh, she did some prelim tests and said, yeah, you know, there's probably something there. So, uh, she sent him to the Northwest ADHD center, which, and it, Actually, in parentheses, he says, such a good Portland resource. So he is here with us in Oregon. Outstanding. And uh, went, to the, went to the Northwest ADHD Center, and uh, I'm in a year in for treatment. Yay. Uh, uh. And uh, it says here, this, this is after at least one time three years prior where I got a screening run at a university, and they actually said no, he didn't have it. They noped it, is what he says. So he was really glad that he got a second opinion and graciously then says, thank you for all you do. Um, so I just thought this was really good that, you know, he had gotten tested three years ago and they said no, but he didn't mm -hmm. necessarily believe that because he was still, you know, having these issues and, and, uh, his therapist, which is obviously a good one because she listened, um, sent him in the right direction. So I just, 
I wanted to put that out there and, and let people know that, you know, even if you've said, even if somebody has said no, go, go get a second opinion if you're still feeling challenged. Thank you so much for writing and sharing that story. That's wonderful. And, uh, we should call over to the Northwest ADHD Center. Why have we not connected with I them? I don't know. Before? That would be but super fun. But we really we need to somebody, do that. Uh, somebody on from there. So there you yeah. go. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and then I have another little story I just want to share. And I mm-hmm. haven't really thought it through. So you're going to hear me verbal processing <laughs> as I'm talking about it. Um, I had a client. I have a client who I've been working with for the last several weeks. And... Um, there was some incredible shifts that I saw happen recently. And I just really wanted to, to talk about it for a minute, just to kind of give people hope when they, they feel a little bit maybe that there isn't any. Uh, this gal came to me, um, pretty frazzled. You know, she was, she was definitely overwhelmed. She was working part time and had a family to raise and, and really didn't feel like much was going right. And, uh, in the conversations that we had at the beginning, there was a lot of taking care of other people, but there was very little about taking care of herself or really valuing who she was. And uh, I asked her a question um, and uh, it hit her pretty hard. And uh, that question was, well, do you love yourself? And uh, she hasn't been able to break free from this question. And uh, so it got her to think about a lot of things. And this is weeks, you know, weeks in in coaching sessions. And yesterday we were talking and, and she was talking about how much of an impact that had on her and that she thought going into coaching was going to be just kind of fixing these things, you know, fixing her meal plan and fixing, um, how she was going to do chores and get things done. And she's like, I'm realizing that it's, it's much more than that, that it's just, it's more about my brain and how I'm thinking about things and how, what my perspective is. And, um, the next question I asked her when we were talking about some other things, I said, well, do you trust yourself? And, you know, of course, that's another big question that has a huge impact when we ask ourselves that. And so again, going kind of through the conversation, a couple of things that kind of came clear because we're kind of coming to the end of our time together. She said, you made me realize it's okay for me to ask for support. It's okay for me not to have to do this alone. I'm accepting my ADHD for the first time. Um, and, uh, and she's making those accommodations to, to navigate it. And, um, when I reflected this back to her, she said to me, she's like, well, congrats, congratulations on saying navigation. <laughs> Cause she, <laughs> she's a very faithful listener of our podcast. And, uh, she said, I know that, you know, with the conversations with James Ochoa, that you were really trying to, to change that wording. And, and so she gave me a kudos, like, oh. Yeah. So this means a lot to me. This, this client is very, very special. It was very um, exciting to me as a coach to see these kinds of shifts and breakthroughs. And I just, you know, I hope it gives some inspiration to some people out there that, uh, you know, it isn't just about the systems. It's not just about the strategies, but it is, it is so much of what's in your head and, um, and working through that. So that was a beautiful moment in my career, and I just wanted to share it with people. I'm so glad you did. That is a beautiful story. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Now let's talk about email. <laughs> <laughs> I, Nikki, I when I started thinking about these, uh, you know, putting together notes for for this conversation, I realized the last time we talked about email, I think I was pretty bearish on email. You know, I was, I'm, I'm all up in Slack and, and, uh, you know, these alternative ways to communicate text. Email was totally overwhelming. And so, you know, I was looking for every way that I possibly could find to jump out of email because I was hating email. I was hating it. And so I started looking up stats to see if I was Ooh, right. you love stats. If my prognostications <laughs> were correct, that people were more like me uh, and that, that they were jumping off the email ship. And it turns out I was totally wrong. Uh, <laughs> email is the unkillable, I think. Um, 3.7 billion users send 269 billion emails every day. 
according to the uh, Radikatai Group uh, recent email report on global email usage. It is bigger than Facebook. It's bigger than Twitter. It's bigger than all of the alternative, uh, you know, chat and text solutions. Uh, I've said email should die. It won't die. So I feel like we need <laughs> it's to gonna keep living. We need to learn to live with it and and change the way we think about it. You know, and and. I think mobile has made it worse. 79% of people use their smartphones for reading emails. 79%, right? That is higher than the percentage of people who use their phones for making phone calls. Uh, according to a report from Email Monday, e- email rates, open rates are up 180% over the same time last year on mobile. 50% of respondents say they wake up and the very first thing they do in the morning is look at their email on their phones. Oh my gosh, I'm so guilty. Yeah. In bed, like that's what you I do, s- right? Yes, yeah. I do. I do that. So that, that I, I don't know. I struggle with that. I struggle with that because I I know that I go fall in and out of the pattern of doing that too. And and when I do, when it becomes that invasive sort of thought, like oh, I got to catch up on email. Oh, I better be in on email. Oh my gosh, what have I done? It's usually uh, because I have changed one of three things. Right? I've changed my lifestyle around email. I change uh, as that is to say how I relate to email personally. Right? How I how I let it define my behavior. Uh, I I've changed my organization. Somehow, where I, I change how I actually implement email in whatever email app or tool I'm using, or I've changed a technology, right? I've changed actually what apps I'm using to to look at and use email. And I'm one of those people. I'm an I'm an app flipper to gibbet, right? I jump from app to app because I like to to try different apps. Um, uh, but this. And so I, I approach this by looking at, you know, what apps are there available? And I I typically would have started with desktop. Um, because that's where I, I personally spend most of my time time uh, just in terms of the work context, but I realized that's not where I check my email the most, right? Because I'm like you, I'm on mobile uh, more often than not. And, and I'll, even while I'm working on something else on my computer, I'll look at my phone if an email comes in, right? Do you find yourself doing that? It's sitting right next to you. You're working on something, a presentation maybe. Uh, <laughs> no, and, I actually right. don't do that because oh. I... No, I put the notifications off of my phone so I don't see my phone. Or I well, don't it's it. like you've already read ahead then. Oh. <laughs> that's really good behavior. Yeah, no. Keep well, going. That's, yeah, because that's like I know better in the sense that when I have to do the presentation or I have to work on something that really has my – well, even when I – I mean, when I work with clients, I shut everything off because I know – I know myself. I know that if I see it come through, I will be curious to see what it is. And I don't want to do that. So, um, yeah, that, that part I've definitely have, um, changed. Well, well I've never done it. I mean, this, that just hasn't yeah. been an issue for me, but. Well, I'm that's sure it really, it's really good. And, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, there are many of us who are stuck in that, that little bit of a loop, right? Where it's yeah. just always available. So it's always in your pocket. It's always buzzing. It's on your watch, wherever it is. And, uh, changing the, you know, changing lifestyle, organization, or technology can help you get to the other side of it, like you have done, right? Is you make mm-hmm. sure that you, you, you are addressing when and where those notifications come in. And, and so I think the first, Step really is that lifestyle uh, behavior issue, right? Which is, and we've said this before, so it kind of buzz through it. Stop checking your email all day long, right? Just, yeah. just stop thinking about your your email. You, you know, I I like to think about email uh, like I think about regular mail, right? When when do you get your mail? I I go in out and I I walk out to the street once a day and I get my mail. Well, oh Pete, what? That is not a good example for me. Why? Because you don't get your mail at all. Like ever. <laughs> well, the, let's let's just leave the metaphor there uh, because okay. I know you are you're actually debilitated with postal mail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gave it to my husband, but he's not doing any better no, than I am. He's not better. <laughs> well, you know, let's let's think back to a time when getting mail was still exciting and it wasn't yeah. mostly junk mail, right? You right. go out, you get it once a day, or it would come in once a day. Well. I, what if you were to approach email that way? What if you were to approach email where it only came to you? Wow, um, that's a different thought, isn't a, it? A couple of times a day, yeah. Like maybe it just comes in at, at nine in the morning and at noon and at four in the afternoon. What if it did that? Just ask yourself, what if? What would change in my life if if that happened? What would the intervening time look like? 
um, you know, between email sessions? What, what would change in the way you do business and the way you communicate with people? Wow. I think, That's I think, a great question. I think it's a good and important question. I really do. Uh, I, I think your strategy to, you know, we're moving into organization, your strategy to turn off notifications is critical, right? I mean, it's just mm-hmm. critical because otherwise the notification is owning you, right? Your mail is owning you. Look at me, look at me, look at me. This is not a, a new thing, uh, obviously, to, to be talking about. Um, but uh, I, I feel like it's important to keep reinforcing this. Don't let email reinforce your behavior. Don't let notifications reinforce your behavior. It's not, it's not good. Um, now, you mentioned you have a standalone folder where you drop all your email. Uh, that, that you need well, to think about later. How does that work? Yeah. So this is what I've done. Um, I, you know, I use a Mac, obviously, right? So we all know that. And uh, my email has all of these little folders, you know, on the side. And I have these categories. And so if there's an email that I feel like I need to save um, for whatever reason, then I stick it into these categories. So um, just to give you an example, I have a category for group coaching. So anything that comes in from group, my groups, I, I put in there if I feel like I need to save. Um, I have podcast emails. So when people email and they have a question or something that, that a suggestion, I put all of those in there. Um, you know, just different. And then like to read. Oh my gosh, the to read one is ridiculous. Um, because there's all these things that I see that come in like through newsletters and stuff. And I think, oh, I want to read that sometime. So I stick it into the to read. And so the email is not in my inbox, but I've got these, I just have all of this stuff here. And I very rarely ever go back to it. The only time I probably would is for bills because of taxes. Okay. And even that is ridiculous. Like I've got stuff from 2014. <laughs> like I'm not, ca- I mean, it's, you know, and yeah. that's just if I get audited, it's like I have to have proof that, yeah, right. you know, do I even need to have that? Do I need to have that there? Well, and I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if you need to have that. My hunch is you don't. Um, and, and here's why. You are using that filing system as an intermediary that exists between the email and the activity that goes along with what needs to happen as a result of the email. And let's use your reading, uh, the, the to read list as an example. Um, th- so the email goes into that box, but when it comes time to actually sit down and catch up on reading, what is the context? Like, what are you, how do you do that? Right. Like when you want to sit down on the couch, what does it look like for you to read articles? Yeah, I don't. Okay. So that's an interesting behavior thing to notice about your behavior, right? You, you don't do that. You're not a person who sits down and reads stuff that you filed away to read for later. That's not what you do. So maybe you are adding a context that is aspirational. That's something like I, I, I sort of in the back of my mind wish I was a person that did that. And so I'm going to go ahead and create this little folder because it will satisfy that, that sort of, you know, hunch in the back of my mind that I could be a person that does that. But there's no value to you, uh, no intrinsic value to you in doing that. So why are you doing that? It's a good question. I, uh, you know, for those kinds of emails, for me, I'll, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I generally will, if there's an article that I want to read, uh, or that I think I want to read, or that I think might be a resource for me someday, I don't file it in email. I send the article over to Evernote. And I, that, because, you know, we've talked about Evernote, it's my filing cabinet. And what's great about Evernote is search. So when it comes time for me to need a resource on whatever topic it might be, I start with Evernote and I search for that topic. And if it comes up, that's where the article is going to be, right? That's the thing. I may not have ever sat down to actually intentionally read it. That makes a lot more sense because I am, that's, yeah. And that's exactly what I'm doing is I'm using this as a filing system. So I really should do the same thing with bills is that put it by the year and just stick it over to Evernote and, and file it there. 
Because then you are, because that's where your system lives, right? That's your trusted system for bills and for reading in this case. That's where your system is. Now, maybe you don't use Evernote for reading. Maybe you use Instapaper. Maybe you use Pocket. Whatever it is, there are a lot of services, if you are a reader, that actually let you save articles for later. If you are not a reader, if you're an aspirational article reader, then maybe you don't need the filing system to support that. Maybe you just archive it in your in your Gmail all all mail folder and let it go. Let it go. Let it okay, go. Okay, so I'm gonna ask I know, right? Let it go. Yeah. We're gonna I, pretend like we're frozen. Right. Um so but sir, I, I do have a very simple, probably silly question. Mm-hmm. Um but how do I get the email to go into Evernote? Uh let's hold on to that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, yes. the you know, I I started this in my notes. I actually the the headline is stop filing, just stop it, please stop it. That's that's <laughs> Nikki, <laughs> stop filing. But it's the not articles. just Nikki. The number of people I run into who still meticulously create folders by sender and by you know, project and by whatever date, like and drag emails once they're done out of their inbox into this this meticulous folder system. Um it's it is um it it used to have value and i have a hard time uh hearing anybody make a case for why that works anymore and i hear this well it works for me i hear that all the time but i would question whether it really works for you right it it's especially if you're living with adhd it is a time and attention black hole it it likely doesn't work for you you think it works for you because you've always done it that way and you don't know what it will be like to let go of that system to change the way you behave with regard to email but i'm telling you email isn't worth it email isn't precious email is on a time decay right every single minute that passes from the moment the sender pressed send that email becomes less and less valuable forever approaching zero value altogether. That's the way email works. But we assign this sort of artificial value to this email message that it allows it to take over our life, to give it greater gravity, right? To make it just heavier on our shoulders. And I, I think that is ultimately destructive to time and attention, the alternative is to leverage some of the new technologies, not even new technologies, but some of the innovation that's going on in email coming from companies like Google and Apple and, and uh, Microsoft around search. And search has gotten so good that you really can let go of your meticulous filing system and trust and trust and trust that when you hit search, it will take you just a few seconds to find what you are looking for when you need it and, uh, and not have the, um, you know, not have the, the overhead of creating this giant process. I have exactly one folder and that is my all mail folder. I have inbox and then all mail and that's it. And my all mail has hundreds and hundreds of thousands of messages. And I know that thanks to, uh, Google's, uh, investment in search, I'll be able to find what I need when I need it. So when you have an email that you do want to save, you're just sticking it into all mail? Uh, yes, but let's let's talk about the next thing, which is, do you remember, do you remember my handy-dandy concept of the workbox? Yes, and I think this is really important to highlight that your inbox, I'm looking at your notes, your inbox is not your workbox. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 I I think we need to scream that because I know there's so many people that that do that. Yeah, and and you know there are a number of different companies that are trying to to fix that problem, right? The problem is this: that we have a number of signals that come into our lives, right? We work and we we have all of these different inboxes. The inbox could be you know our inbox on our computer, it could be our voicemail inbox, it could be our actual physical inbox, our mailbox, it could be the you know the sticky notes that people pass you in the hallway, it could be a business card that you get at a conference, whatever it is. This inbox could be your pocket. It could be whatever, but it all the incoming signals need to end up in one place. Maybe you live on your calendar where all of these things that come into your life are actually scheduled and put on a calendar and and that is 
you know exactly where you're going to be at any given time because that's when you're doing the work. Uh, for me, uh, it's, it is a to do app, uh, called things three uh, on the Mac. That's where, that's my, that's my work box, right? That's my task list. That's where I have all of the information about all the work that I'm going to need to do, uh, at any given time. And when appropriate, it is scheduled so that tasks show up on a given day, et cetera, et cetera. But, that is where all of my work is integrated. All the tasks are integrated, whether it came from that business card at a conference or that sticky note that was handed to me. I go in and I dump it all into things, which defines the work that I need to do. The email inbox is just another incoming signal. And the challenge that I see is when people have both an inbox that is their email inbox and a work box, like for me, things three, which has a different set of work. Right. And so now you have two different places where you're living. You have your email that you always feel like you need to stay on top of, that the weight of the world is on you to respond quickly because, uh, you know, what will happen if if people don't get a response for you right from you right away. But you also have this work that's now decaying in your on your calendar and in your in your uh, you know work box because you haven't gone through the process of actually integrating the two. And I think that is you know a best practice that pays such high dividends with just a little bit of effort, um, and uh, and it will it will change your life, right? So I I look at it uh, you know I look at my email inbox. As, as something that needs to be turned into actions in things. I send every email that needs to, that I need to do something with into things. If it is something that I need to respond to, I, I have a shortcut key in my email application and I hit that key and it sends it right over to things where I type in a little action that says, you know, respond to Nikki about that nice review that we just got. I put a date and time on it and I save it there. Right. Does that make sense? Do you actually, this is the part that I'm not getting and, and it does make sense. And I, I completely understand the inbox and the work box, but I, I guess I go back to like my original question about how do you get it to Evernote? How do you get that? Are you saving the, the email and putting it into th- things three so you can actually see the email or are you just like taking some notes from the email and putting it into things three that you need to respond to me. Well, here's what I like, and this gets to this, that we're going to skip around a little bit around the technology. Uh, the the email apps that I've centered on, the email app that, that I'm using right now and the, um, the you know, the applica- task application I'm using, what I love so much about it is that they have, uh, they use these URL schemes. And a URL scheme is just a fancy way of saying that, you know, one application can in secret, or not secret, but invisibly open another application. So when I go, when I'm working in my email app and I hit the the shortcut key that I've configured here, um, uh, and, and in, you know, on mobile, it's a swipe action. So I just swipe, you know, from the right to the, or from the left to the right, uh, and that action on that email means send to things. Um, it includes both the body of the message and a link back to the message in my email. So when it comes time for me to act on that email, I'm in things. That email is no longer in my inbox. It's archived. But that URL uh, is in things. So when I tap on it, it opens the URL, uh, it triggers the URL. So it opens it in my email application and allows me to respond to it right there very quickly when it comes time for me to need to do it. Okay. So my question then is when you say it's archived, does that mean that you've deleted it? No, I don't generally delete email. I archive email and, and that's a, that is definitely a Gmail convention that is being adopted by other providers, um, where you're, you're just saying, okay, I'm finished with this email, but it might serve as a reference. For me later, and space is largely unlimited, uh, and there are a lot of concerns around. Uh, I know around you know servers that are you know uh, running and energy and all of these things. That, you know there is a cost to saving data, uh, but generally, you know for at least a couple of years, I leave that email in my all mail or my archive. Um, email box. And there's probably still some email you delete I though, do. right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I definitely do as I'm going through it. And I have a little shortcut for me. If I hit the delete, if I'm selected on an email and I hit delete, 
that's actually archive, right? It just means delete it from the inbox, and but it stays in my all mail, um, my all mail folder. And that's where your all mail yeah. is. Is your all mail is your archive is the stuff that you yes. think that you might need at some point, or that you just want to have, and then right. eventually. Right. And then my command delete on my keyboard or, or I think control delete on, on Windows, command delete is configured to delete. That actually moves it not just out of my inbox, but saving it in my archive. That actually moves it out of the archive, out of the inbox, and puts it in trash. And trash empties itself on a 30-day rolling uh, schedule. So um, on any given day, if it's within the month that I deleted a message, I still can go back in and search that trash and and find it. So um, that's the, the workflow that I've sort of landed on, which is um, search for stuff that I, I need that haven't that I haven't scheduled as a as a task. Anything that's actionable, I put it in my workbox because I want to be able to see the actions that are associated with it and schedule the time into my day. Uh, and I don't manage my day in my inbox, right? I don't live in my email and let that define my day. Email-related tasks are actionable. Respond to, you know, uh, research X, Y, Z. Uh, these are the this is the kind of language that you want to put around your email, so you don't fall into the trap of hyper focus on email clarity. And that that's a real problem for me. That's when my ADHD really triggers. When I'm not when I when this system isn't working, I know it's generally because I've let the email um, I I have let the activity I've let the activity of addressing email become the thing of the day become the the little reward that that's you know giving me that dopamine push right i'll hyper focus on on you know cleaning out my email and responding to every single thing that's in there and and um and and it's it takes over and i that's when i lose focus on the actual work that needs to be done which is all sitting over in my in my to do app my task app wow yeah. i love this the the challenge i think that that people run into is around switching costs you know what i mean like at some point you have to face the costs of changing your behavior and that may look like email bankruptcy we've talked about that before where you say look my i have an inbox that is full of you know tens of thousands of message i'm never going to get to uh, i at some point i have to, to to put this the time in to move all those into the archive and to clean out my inbox and make sure that email that I need to act on is in my work box and that email that I don't is archived or deleted. Uh, you have to schedule the time to do that. And that's a switching okay. cost, right? That's hard. Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. So if you're really backed up, like I've got a lot of files that I gotta, I have to do something with, right? I either need to delete or archive. Yeah. Or put into action or... Well, like, in, for example, you, you have one that's that's right on the top of my head. You said, you know, when you get a podcast follow-up, something about podcasts, and, and that's one of those interesting things. Like, you've, you've got it stuck in kind of an intermediary space, but you seem to totally. have a process. Like, when we record a podcast, I imagine you go to that file and look at it. But I wonder if there isn't a behavior around, um, you know, taking an email from that podcast and putting it directly into the show notes for the episode where you want to talk about it, right? Doing that rather than living, leaving it in an intermediary space, actually put it where it's going to be, you know, where oh, you're you going to need head, it. You hit the nail, uh, nail on the head. I did. Because when we just before we got onto this recording, you asked, "Do you have any follow up? Do we have any follow up?" And I wanted to follow up on that story, mm -hmm. right? I wanted to tell about that story about the therapist, and I had to go into my email. I had to go into my inbox because that's where it was sitting, mm -hmm. and and search for it mm -hmm. and look for it. And I couldn't, you know, it took me what maybe a couple minutes. I mean, not a lot, no. but it took me a couple minutes to find it. So what you're saying is when I get that email and I know that I want to share that story, I should just be putting that into our show notes and then deleting or archiving Archive the, email. the email. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So now, I but I got to go back to, okay, there's people that are listening that have a thousand, 10,000 yeah. emails in their inbox and they've got all of these file folders. And so what do you tell them? Like how you're just saying, take, you got to take the time to get rid, to, to get rid of that stuff. Well, at some point, you're going to have to face the fact that you're never going to get through 10,000 emails that are sitting in your inbox. And this goes back to the time, the time decay of email. Right. As you scroll down, you just just scroll down your list of emails. Uh, you will find that the further you get from the top or the bottom, depending on how you're sorted, 
the closer the value comes to zero. That's so true. Right? Yeah. At some point, you will face that switching cost and you will realize that the email that you're holding on to has no value and you'll have to face the time of just getting it out of your inbox, cleaning the slate and moving it over. Now, I it, we've talked about this concept of inbox zero and uh, it was it was coined by uh, a fellow named Merlin Mann who is a, a, a funny and smart internet personality and uh, a smart speaker and and I like Merlin a lot. Uh, it, but what's what's funny, I mean he coined this years ago and I, I think he's all but abandoned it. Uh, because of his own feeling about email. Uh, the whole concept of Inbox Zero was, you know, at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you clear out your inbox, that you're, it is empty uh, because, you know, and then and all that means that all your email is is filed, you've taken action, and that you're, you're on top of your activity. And, uh, you know, I, I think there are some problems with thinking about it that way. Right. And I don't think inbox zero is a thing you need to worry about it for, for all people. I mean, it may be, you may be the person who has 10,000 messages in your e- inbox and you don't care. Right. It doesn't have any emotional weight on you at all that mm-hmm. you know that email is one giant list of messages that have come to you and you kind of read them when you get them. And God, more power to you if you're that person. I, I love you. You are fantastic to be able to, to do that. From the ADHD perspective, I would submit that adopting something like Inbox Zero, being able to look at your inbox and see that it is empty, that emptiness is a visual indicator, right, that you are, that your systems are working. It is a signal, right? It's that visual reminder that you're not falling behind, that you're not lost in the weeds, and that you can trust your system. And when your inbox is full, if you have adopted some of these other systems, like the workbox, for example, then you know that maybe something else is not working. Again, it's a visual indicator that you're behind somewhere and that maybe you should take take a bit to get back on top of it again. I, I don't think, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not um, suggesting you have to be, you know, hard on yourself and super vigilant about uh, about hitting inbox zero, you know, twice a day, every day. But I do think it's an important thing from the ADHD perspective to consider that it could be a good signal for you, a good indicator that that you know you're on top of uh, the work where it needs to be, when it needs to be scheduled, etc. Does that make sense? It does because. When you first said that, it was interesting because I kind of chuckled a little bit because I thought, gosh, the ADHD perspective, what is he going to say? Because I, I, my first instinct was, I wonder if somebody wouldn't feel a little bit of panic. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, there's nothing there. What am I forgetting? But what I love is what you said is that, no, 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 no. I mean, you kind of like answered my question because it's not about forgetting what you've done is you have touched everything. You have put it in a place that you trust, whether it's things three or for me, it's to doist. It's like you, uh, I I love how you expanded that because it's like, no, 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 you, you actually have done the work here. So there isn't anything to forget. There isn't anything to panic about. And like you said, it's a really good signal that things are working. It's, it's just like the key bowl. Right on your entry hall table. If you're somebody who has adopted the key bowl, you walk in the house and your keys go in the bowl. And if they're not in the bowl, then what's wrong with your system? If they're not in the bowl, then one, you better not be in your house, right? The keys better, better <laughs> right. be with you and you're not there. But if you're in your house and you're looking at an empty key bowl, check your purse, check your pockets, check the front door, um, because your keys, your system is failing. If you're in the house and the bowl is empty, then your system is failing and you need to evaluate that system and find your keys. Mm -hmm. First, find Mm -hmm. your keys, then evaluate the system. How about that? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I look at it the same way. These visual indicators are really important. They're an important Mm -hmm. reminder about your system. And in this case, you'll want the empty inbox because that's a reminder that you have a system and that you can trust it today. So I love that. Pete, I am so grateful for you. Oh, you're so sweet. (laughs) Seriously, it, it's so wonderful that you can see these things and like work through them because, uh, yeah, I know there are so many people that I work with that struggle with this. And then with my own struggles, you've just given me such um, inspiration to like figure this out, like 
make it more streamlined and trust it and get rid of the long line of emails trying to search for something. Well, it's just awesome. I think that's I really it. important. If you can ask yourself that question, like if like your question about the reading list, am I a person who sits down and catches up on these articles? If not, why am I saving them? Right? Just ask yourself that question. Um, you know, I want to wrap up with just a, a couple of more thoughts on the actual technology, right? This is a, a, <laughs> a digital episode and we haven't talked about any apps. So I feel like I need to How dare talk us. about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I uh, when you are looking for, if you are on the market, If you think you might be on the market for a new email app, if you are just using the default email app uh, on your mobile device, um, then, you know, here are some things to think about. These are just some words that you might want to look for uh, when you are on the market. And I I already mentioned I use AirMail uh, for Mac and iOS, and I love it because of integrations, right? It integrates with my workbox, in this case, Things 3. It also integrates with Fantastical, my calendar, and Evernote, my filing system, and Trello, and Cardhop, and OneDrive, and Dropbox, and Todoist, and, 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 and. It integrates with all of these services. So what does that mean? It means you can you can tie your email client, in this case, AirMail, with those services and allow them to talk to one another. Okay, how do I do that? Because I want AirMail, AirMail to go to Todoist. How do I do that? <laughs> okay. Well, first, come on, come on, come go, on. go buy info. AirMail at AirMailApp.com okay. or in the, in the Mac right. App Store, and you got to pick it up for uh, iOS and for uh, AirMail and then, or, and for the Mac. And then when you go into uh, the services menu in, in preferences, you'll have an option. And I can, I can tie it. You can just say enable, 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 enable. In some cases, like Evernote and Box, all these Todoist, for example, it'll say log in. But once you log in, you can customize the swipes and shortcut keys for that uh, for those apps. So for so you just answered my question on how to get the email into these systems. What do you think about that? Oh my gosh! Yeah. So you have changed my world. I, I did. I think I really did. The you know, I, I you become savvy with some of these shortcut keys and swipes, uh, and then you can, uh, you know, your life gets a lot easier. So integrations, Mailbird on Windows is another that does the same thing. Uh, these these apps that tie together other systems and and um, allow you to um, integrate your inbox and your email inbox and your workbox. What about Outlook, though? I know so many people obviously are probably listening to this. They're sitting at work and they use Outlook. Uh, Outlook is a massive, massive application, and it does all this stuff for you, right? It's very convenient that the inbox is also the workbox app, right? You just send this email and make it a task. And and now it's on your task list. Send, take this email and make it an event. Now it's on your calendar. That's very convenient. And and Outlook has a lot, uh, a, a, a lot going for it. The challenge that I have with Outlook is because your inbox is your workbox, it's always checking for new inbox stuff. So I simply encourage you to visit that that work offline in the send receive menu and uh, and turn off the incoming uh signal for a while uh maybe create oh, because you're gonna still see the inbox exactly you can't hide from new it. emails yeah. when you're trying to work i see so you can go into the send receive groups option and there's a little checkbox that says schedule automatic send and receive every n minutes right i think the default is like 30 and many people change it to 10 or 5 so it's always looking for email. And I disagree with that. I think you should change it to, you know, 120 or 240, right? Make sure it's scheduling an automatic send and receive action two or three times a day uh, so that you're not inundated with email every, you know, few minutes. But y- y- your mileage may vary if you're in an office and you need, uh, you have, you're expected to have, uh, you know, quicker access to email. Uh, you'll have to figure that out. But uh, Outlook is is one that has all of those integrations that I'm talking about built in. Uh, so other apps that, and, and not recommendations specifically, but just more things to think about. Machine learning and artificial intelligence, uh, you know, they're buzzwords, but believe it or not, they're having a big impact on your email. Uh, Gmail, for example, is getting smarter. It's getting way smarter, 
right? It's it's able to figure out appointments that come into your email. It's figuring out plane tickets and train tickets, and it's finding all of these things and reminding you when they are coming, adding events to your calendar as it def- discovers that events have come into your email, and it's doing that without you having to take action. And that is the future of email. That is what these smart teams are doing to actually help you manage your email without having to waste the brain space yourself on it, right? This is the same kind of transition we made from having to memorize all of our friends and family's phone numbers to actually being able to put them in an online address book, right? That's a big deal that we don't think about phone numbers anymore because we don't have to. Uh, well, at some point, we're going to not have to think about email anymore because the system will take care of all of the the minutia for us. Edison is another app. Edison Email is doing the same thing. These guys are trying to solve the email problem uh, by just having you run their software, right? It will find contacts and calendar app appointments and trips and bills and photos, and their assistant feature actually creates these beautiful timelines of subscriptions, travel, shipping notifications, bills, receipts, entertainment like Fandango, barcodes, uh, security. It's constantly checking your email accounts against data sources that are tracking emails that have been included in major hacks. Uh, It's amazing. And then it also lets you warn your friends that their email address might have been hacked. So you can go to the security timeline and it says, okay, you've got like six friends. They were in the the most recent uh, Equifax uh, release of data. You may want to warn them. They may not know. Um, so there, this software in the background is super intelligent about your uh, about the kind of data that's flowing in and out of your email. And so, I think bet- if you keep in mind right integrations, how to you, tie your inbox, your email inbox into other services, and uh, intelligence, machine learning, AI, those kinds of terms, when you're shopping for your next email client you're going to end up with a smarter email client and a better email experience. Wow. You're mind blown? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. I love this stuff because now I'm inspired to purge and delete and yeah. archive and get that airmail and put stuff into Evernote. And yeah, yeah, this is great. Thank you. See, I was, I was so looking forward to this. I know it helped me tons Good. and I'm, I hope it helped our listeners. Well, too. I'm glad it's a little bit this longer episode, but I feel like uh, this is important stuff. And if you hang up on email, then I hope you, you find that this is useful to you uh, yes. and, and that you can use it to move forward. Face the fear. That's it. Face the fear. Mm-hmm. That's right. So next week is our last show of the year. Yes, it is. Bring champagne. Yes, it is. Yes. And uh, I don't know exactly what we're going to talk about. (laughs) Uh, But it's going to be really good. Excellent. Probably a little bit of year in review. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I probably, now that I'm talking about it, probably talk a little bit about the webinar that I just did because that was on goal setting. Oh, yeah. So maybe we'll have some stuff in Yeah, yeah. Maybe one of your goals is getting ahead of your email. And now you have a plan. Now you have a plan. There you go. Yep. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Thank you so much, Nikki Kinzer. This was super fun. And thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening. Especially uh, thank you to those of you who have uh, jumped on the Patreon train. We sure appreciate your uh, direct support. It means a lot. Are you going to put all these links and stuff into the show notes? Oh, yeah. You know, I actually have a big train trip this afternoon, so I'll be using that to build the show notes and get everything done. Awesome. Here Here we go. All right. Thanks, everybody. We deeply appreciate your time and attention. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next time for our last show of the year right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm -hmm.